I want to, I keep saying, I understand it. I keep saying, I understand the conditioning and the fear and traditionally how we've done this, how we continue to do this. And when y'all are saying, Monique, why would you drag his daughter in it? Y'all not listening to the shit. He dragged his daughter he in it when he said it. He told the story. Those are his words. If you go out there, you can see that interview. It's all over. But because I posted it, because I posted it on my page, now y'all are saying, Monique, why are you attacking? Let me tell y'all something. And I want to be so clear about this shit. Because when I see these kind of comments, listen, when I see comments like, you're going to get blackballed again, if that is the case, then so God be it, y'all. If because I'm speaking up and speaking out, but I'm, 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 oh, I was getting ready to say it. I don't like to say juicy words on here because the babies might be watching. But when you start getting in business with real cats, when you start getting in business with real cats, see, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, that's a real cat. See, Lee Daniels, that's a real cat. Though we had to go through the mud, baby. But at the end of the day, what he proved himself to be was a stand-up black man because a genuine I am sorry, that, that proves yourself to be that genuine stand-up black man. So they out there. So for the ones that can't hold their shit, I don't want to be in business with them. Let me be clear. And for you black, see, this is why I'm a little, I'm a little warm right now, y'all. I'm a little warm. Because see, my daddy was D.L. Hughley. My daddy, even though he apologized, he went to his grave and I still looked at him like you a piece of shit. Because you talked a good game, but when your family needed your protection, you went in your bedroom and you drank yourself to sleep. See, I know that cat. I know him. So when I saw that story and when that brother called and said, let me just give this to y'all. And y'all keep saying, oh, he apologized. He did. But when did an apology erase the trauma? Be sure to like, and share, and subscribe. That's not as much the issue about the apology Come on. in conjunction with the trauma. And when you say you're bringing his daughter into it, what his daughter is getting right now is someone that's in alignment with her as a black woman who was abused by her brother. So that everything she has felt and everything that she feels moving forward, she knows that it's a level of confirmation because no one knows what it is that that sister went through but that sister. And the other individuals who knows what it is to be violated, especially another black woman coming to her aid, that's a level of comfort that oftentimes doesn't happen because again, we in our black community from slavery to right now have been trained have been conditioned, move forward. You got work to do. Keep that under the hat. You got to be ready for the mall. And then all of a sudden, one day, you break down. Why? Because you're not dealing with it openly and honestly. We as a community have to stop living in secret and be honest enough to speak openly. Because if we don't, we're going to suffer in silence. And then you wake up one day, this person did something to themselves and you didn't know why. You've got, again, people that won beauty pageants and they took themselves out. Why? Don't know. But we can't get better until we have these conversations aloud. I don't want to project the idea that he's a terrible human being, but it is terrible that he doesn't realize as a human being what he said he did to his daughter. And if he is contrite about what he did, or if he is sorry about what he did to his daughter, then show empathy to the other individuals out there. You can have dialogue about anybody you want to have, but there's a respectful way to do it. Because if you notice, I ain't trying to talk about him terribly. I'm not, as a black man, what I think he did and allowed to happen, I don't understand it. But what I'll say is this, we got to talk about it. 
And I want to address something. And this is the sad shit, y'all. This is the shit we done bought into. When I hear people, because as I read your comments, I believe I can hear you. Why is he talking? Why is he talking? Because he can. And he needs to. And he needs to. See, what we're trying to show, what we're trying to show, is it's okay to trust each other. It's okay to have each other's back in a way, baby, that is so unbreakable. But when you have people like D.O. Hughley that finds a way to make fun of people's love, I want y'all to understand, baby, I'm not attacking D.O. Hughley's family by no means. I love that brother's family. What I'm doing is bringing the light as the character as to who D.O. Hughley is. So for as long as y'all don't want to hear what you really need to be listening to, I didn't put anybody out there. That interview was all over the world. D.L. Hughley told the story. I didn't put anyone out there. Those stories never go away. That's there forever. He shared the story, and I want you to listen to how he shared it. It was and, almost a blowover. And if you're wondering why I'm speaking, because I'm not a star, I'm not a celebrity, then you can understand why in your everyday life people look at you Why are you speaking. Mm. And when you're not courageous enough to speak up because people don't think that you are valid enough, you big enough, you a star, and you stay quiet, you've let them win. We don't care who's on our side as long as we're on the side of what's right. If you can prove us wrong, prove us wrong. If you can show that D.L. Hughley hasn't talked trash about people before and after he made that post, then we apologize. But if you can't show that, then you would have to ask yourself, how can a man be betray his daughter by believing a friend that he likes a lot over the daughter that he's supposed to love, but then feel comfortable talking about other people and the things that they've done wrong. The only way you can do that is by not acknowledging the magnitude of what you've done wrong. Our sweet community. Our sweet community, y'all. And we're watching it. We're watching it. We watching it. And all this privacy stuff, all this having in privacy. And there's a list out there of the people they say I had a problem with. Whoopi, Oprah, Tyler, Steve, Will Packer. Um, who else is on that list? Cheryl Underwood, Kim Whitley. Um, it's, quite, it's, it's, it's quite a few people on the list. It might be about 10 people on the list. What I would suggest is get them all together. All of them. Let's do a BET town hall meeting. Let's do a meeting publicly. Let's have every last one of them tell them what their problem is with me. And what you'll find is with every last one of them, they try to or either talk foolishness and they got it handed back to them and they could not handle it. Get them all together. And they point out all the people that she's had a problem with. But what they fail to mention is the details of why she has a problem with them. Yeah. And why they have a collective problem. Let's delve into the specifics because we as a community, we get caught up and we buy into generalities like a deal memo. People, woo, boom, bang, bang. Oh, he done dropped the bomb. He got a nail. He got a nail. A deal memo with no signatures, but y'all going to question her contract because it came from our attorney. But y'all didn't notice that the deal memo came from his agent, not even from a legal stamp, the, the agent. This is what they said that they wanted. That's why we got specific. So if we got to take the heat for saying we love the community so much that we're going to try to tell them the truth. We heard this wild story one time. We heard about this What's cat that, that took one fish and fed a whole group of people. They, he walked on water. 
He was for the people. He hated when he saw the, the, the vendors uh, taking advantage of the people. And he did all this good. And he died on the cross. That's We, we heard the story about that. So when you hear about a cat that we ain't came close to in the sense of we ain't not walked on water, we ain't took one fish. Now we took some fish and may have fried it up, but there's enough fish for everybody. Mm. No miracle. And they put him on the cross. We know we ain't got nothing coming. So we not doing it for any other reason than for the people that are willing to listen, they'll hear it. For the people that don't, it's not meant for you. But when you keep getting mistreated, Understand it's because you've emboldened the mistreater to take advantage.